fall at the first hurdle. So yes, we are being recorded. So the first item on the agenda is apologies. And we've already received apologies from Rob Pritchard and Jeremy Oates. And I understand Councillor Maycock is here as a substitute. Do we have any other apologies? No? Right, the next item, then item two, is appointment of a vice chair. Um, so we're requesting nominations. I would like to nominate Ben Price, please. Do we have a seconder for that? Sorry, I'm nominating Ben Price. Do we have a seconder? Do we have any other nominations? All those in favour? I think that's carried. We're now going on to the minutes of the previous meeting. Um, of course, I wasn't here. So, is there a, somebody from the meeting? Ben, you're going to move them. That's lovely. Fabulous. And can we have a vote by show of hands of those who are here? Thank you. And item four, any declarations of interest? Everyone's quiet, so we're okay with that. Right, um, item five, update from the chair. As this is my first meeting, there is no update um, at this stage, but trust me, there will be <laughs> at a future one. So item six, then, is a response to reports of the Infrastructure Safety and Growth Scrutiny Committee. So... Right. So the former chair took the scrutiny recommendations to Cabinet on the 6th of April and the Cabinet supported that recommendation and the item was resolved. Um, do I need to read those? No. So no. The, I mean, if you want to, there were four recommendations already there. Oh, and right. Um, two extra recommendations. Right. You could read them out. So there was four recommendations from the report, but there's additional ones from the scrutiny committee, which were that the Tamworth Borough Council EV charging strategy is received by the committee in its draft form before the end of 2023, and point two, that the installation of charging points within Tamworth will be treated as a cabinet priority moving forward. Something I'm sure we're all very keen to see get done as soon as possible. So item seven, consideration of matters referred to us by the cabinet and there were none so item eight is the dual stream recycling quarterly update and we have oh we don't have nigel right so we have councillor j um ms woodhouse and mr g is it possible can i ask that because there's a few new ones obviously if officers could introduce themselves so that we could if that's okay thanks I also fell up the first hurdle. Um, Stephen G. I'm the operations manager uh, at Litchfield District Council. Uh, so part of that role is that I oversee the arrangement for waste and recycling for the Joint Waste Board. Um, other things that come under my remit are car parks, street scene, uh, parks. So I was quite interested then when you just mentioned the EV strategy. So again, I think you'll find that in a different way, we'll, we'll also work together. But certainly here with my wasted on today. Okay. Vicky Woodhouse, I'm the Customer Relations and Performance Manager for the Joint Waste Service. So although employed by Litchfield, we work for both Tamworth and Litchfield on the Joint Waste. Um, good evening, Anna Miller. I'm the Assistant Director for Growth and Regeneration, um, the Senior Responsible Officer for the delivery of the Future High Streets Fund programme. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alice Poulton. I'm the Regeneration Project Officer, also working on the Future High Street Fund programme with Anna Miller. Yes, if I can invite the officers then to give us the update, please. Yeah, 
Okay. Um, I think those that have been here before uh, know Nigel, who normally presents. He's fortunate enough to be away on his holidays at the moment. Um, so I think you've all received the report to do with the dual stream service uh, performance update. Um, I won't go through the whole report, but I will just try and pick on some of the key points that come out within it. Um, the good news is that operational performance is where it should be at. Uh, we had some challenges going back uh, for, for around about four or five months ago where uh, the amount of crews we were using were up and above what they should have been, partly as a result of introducing the new service. Uh, an amount of work has gone into that and we are now back on budget, so we are running an average of 8.5 crews per day, um, which is within the original budget. Uh, a real positive, and I say that because I've only been in this role for ooh, about seven weeks, um, so I can't compare to other authorities, uh, but one of the things that, that did come up that uh, I was told that our complaints had gone through the roof when the new service came in. Uh, I won't apologise for it, it won't. Uh, unfortunately, that, that is what did occur. The good news is they are back at what I would call normal levels. Um, so the figures in the appendices do show that. Uh, but I think last month we were at uh, well, three complaints. So the number of complaints has fallen dramatically. We will never get away down to zero. Brilliant if we did. But the number of complaints we got is back in what I would call normal levels. Um, I believe that um, there were concerns when the new service came in uh, among members in Tamworth over the introduction of the blue bag and the impact that that may have on re residents who may struggle with the physical side of carrying the bag, moving the bag, putting it out. Um, what has become evident is um, a bit double edged because from my side it actually increases our costs and the difficulty of the operation but from a perspective of the resident, it does improve the service for them. So we had around about 1,800 assisted collections on the old system. Um, that has increased to around about 2,300. And if anything, is going up. The real reason for that isn't the fact that we're, like myself, um, not getting any younger. It is the fact that we had more residents who needed assistance because of the weight of the bag. Um, we talked about resident participation. Um, within waste, and certainly within the dry recycling, it is exceptionally high. Um, I think what I'd say to individuals when you're wandering around the borough and it's bin day, you'll see that the vast majority of bins are out. Uh, so we have got a high participation rate in the high 90s uh, that people are engaging in that service. There were conversations around the number of blue bags that were out there. Um, again, the good news is, and I, I, I did have a conversation earlier with Councillor Jay, that it would appear that the service has settled and people are used to the service. Um, we do have additional bags uh, that are available if residents require them. There is a number of pallets in the yard now uh, of additional blue bags. We have actually changed the blue bag uh, I did mean to bring one today, but I'll bring one to the next. That's my showpiece, that is bringing a new bag out. But what we have got, the bags are bigger than those that originally went out. Um, I, I think, if we're brutally honest, they weren't quite big enough in the first place. Ideally, people have got used to them. The new bag is definitely bigger. It's the same size as the one that I've been using in Stafford Borough Council for the past number of years, and it works for a family of, of, of my size which is four or five individuals. So they are available and residents are able to basically go online and, and, and request them. Um, again, if we go through the appendices, and all this is graphed in the appendices, and the graphs do actually paint the picture uh, quite cl uh, clearly. Uh, but again, the good news is the number of ejected bins has come down. If you bear with me a second, I will give, I will give you an average. If I can find them. It was 350 bins per week. That's not the figure I'm looking for. Uh, no apologies. Oh, so it's contaminated bins. Uh, so yes, uh, rejected bins at, at its lowest level, which is around about 350. We were in the 600, 700 at the start of the service, which again is a sign that the service is working. 
Um, we'll also find that um, the number of missed bins has, re has also come down. So the number of bins that we were missing was often round about the 120, 130 a week. It's down in the 50s, 60s now, which again is partly the crews getting used to the rounds, but also the fact that we are trying to manage these situations to, to improve. I will say in case anybody does have any questions, I think one of our, our challenges at the moment, I'm sure Vicky will sort of agree with me, is we still miss more missed collections than we should do. Uh, we don't have an excuse for it. We, won't, um, we will put it right, and a lot of effort is going on from the team to improve that service <coughs> uh, for residents. Should any come up, please, please do let me know. Headline recycling figures. Um, figures have just come out, um, including garden waste. They have fallen, uh, and they are around about the 40% remark at the moment. This compares to 43% last year. Um, within the appendices that you've got, you will see a three-year trend of what's happened on recycling rates. What you will find, and the one thing I will actually, that, that, that isn't in those figures, but please take comfort from, that the trend is similar across the whole of Staffordshire and across um, the rest of the country. So th there's been a three, four percent drop at all boroughs in Staffordshire, apart from, I think it's, um, I think it's safe staff that have gone down five percent and we only had the one that's gone up, which was Newcastle Council, and that was, again, due to a change of recycling service and an introduction of food waste. But the rest of us, including Tamworth and Litchfield, have seen a drop of 4%. Um, that is something that we will be working on, along with members, uh, along with Litchfield and Tamworth, to, to try to rectify, to try to get our recycling right back to where we'd, we'd like, it to say, uh, like it to be. Um, I would add at this point that again recycling rates are heavily affected by green waste. Um, we've had conversations last season or last year for, for, for growing was a slow year. Tonnages were down. Tonnages were down because it was a very dry summer. This year it's been growing like Billio, as you, you've probably noticed in your own gardens. So there is a feeling or a belief that the tonnages will and, and the recycling rate will pick up as a result of that. Um, however, it is fair to say that in total our recycling rate from the curbside has dropped down by about 18% in total. That, that's, that's quite frightening in terms of what we've actually lost. However, what we should also be aware of, which is a good news um, story, is the amount of residual waste that we collect has also fallen. So residual waste has come around by, down by about 10%. Now, anything we do on recycling, what we don't want to do is increase tonnage. Now, we don't want to suddenly produce more waste of any type than we did in the first place. So what we will keep working towards is driving the figures down, the recycling rate percentage increasing, but that residual waste coming down. Uh, a big positive of the new scheme um, is that the quality of the recycle that we're producing has improved dramatically. Um, it's down to 2.93% contamination. Uh, Credit to ourselves, that's better than out of previous places. It, it's really quite a, a good figure. Um, again, just possibly to help explain the difference is that when you go and separate products, so we put the paper and the card, the fibre in one bin, and the DMR, the plastic, the, the glass and the cans in another, what you do by default is rather than mixing it all in together, whoop, um, you separate it out and that does include uh, increase the quality. It's fair to say that if we'd listened to the Prime Minister last week, he was talking about the need to improve quality, because it should be about quality, not quantity. That should be about both. But the quality is important. He used the term, Vicky, wish, wish cycling, which was the, the equivalent of, um, I, I tried to compare it to, to um, greenwashing. It was the idea that wish cycling is, I think that I can actually recycle that. I can't. Um, and so I just chuck in any bin into your recycling bin to get tonnages up. But genuinely, if you compare what was happening on the single stream system when Litchfield and Tamworth were having a, a large number of loads rejected, I think since we went onto this system, we've had one load rejected. 
A load rejected probably cost you in the region three and a half thousand pound. It's not good news. And the other thing, put my hands up, um, that load wasn't down to our, our residents. It was down to the operation. We mixed a load up accidentally. It does happen. It shouldn't happen. But one load compared to, I don't know how many hundreds you had last year under Leachfield, but now you had, uh, and, and time with, but you had a hell of a lot. That is a good news story. <coughs> Um, I have sp spoken earlier uh, with Councillor Jay, reference um, a recycling campaign that Leachfield is looking to lead on, which we are taking long to ask Tamworth to have a look at as well. Uh, because from my perspective, same as Vicky, I might be employed by Leachfield District Council, but my operation is the Joint Waste Board. Um, and what we achieve needs to be achieved as a total, not as a Tamworth on its own, not as a Litchfield on its own, but as a, um, as a joint effort. So there is a recycling campaign that Litchfield have currently done some work on that I have invited Councillor Jay to come over to have a look at. I would genuinely appreciate any support that we get from members to, to consider it, to look at it and see what we can do. We tend to find, and it's an old cliche, but if we want to get our recycling rates up, it's the old cliche, educate, educate, educate. And if we can work with our colleagues, um, with our residents, and get our residents to actually self-police, the truth is, the more recycling we can generally create, it controls our costs. Um, financial performance. I apologise for this, but I'm going to get straight to the end figure because that's the one I always look at. We can give you a breakdown of gate fees and what's happened here or there, uh, but on around about a £6 million bu uh, budget, we overspent by £197,000 last year. Uh, the expenditure was split between uh, Litchfield and Tamworth pro rated so Tamworth it was £79,000 overspend. Now that sounds like a lot of money. Uh, I would actually say that was superb news, really good news on the size of the budget. If we take on board that last year there was a lot of pressure out there in the market, fuel prices went through the roof, so you know we, we saw 50 pence per litre rises on, on our vehicle, uh, on, on, on a litre of fuel, and when you think one of the bin lorries we're running around is, is probably getting three and a half miles per gallon, that's a big chunk. And that is the vehicle, not the drivers, I will add. Um, we had a larger than expected uh, wage increase for the staff due to the cost of living crisis. Um, the weather flip side, recycling prices, so commodity prices, were exceptionally good at the start of the year. Um, I would add that from a perspective of the Joint Waste Board, we can manage the market in terms of the deals that we get based on ratios but we can't control the price of the market. The reality is that, daft as it sounds, if something happens in China, that world and global market is affecting the, the, the price of our plastic or our, or, our, or our paper. But I would genuinely say that if I'd have come at the start of last year and I'd have, I'd have been in and could take the credit for it and I'd, I'd have delivered a 79,000 deficit over that budget, I, I would genuinely have been delighted. Um, projects on the table. Uh, we are about to go into a large period of change in the industry. I think what, in fairness, it's probably best that we start to update that in further detail when we've engaged with portfolio holders um, next time round. Um, just to give everybody the chance to, to absorb the information that's going on, the changes that, that are afoot. Uh, but on, on the positive projects that are going on at the moment, we are working on the flats to try to improve recycling of flats, um, which are historically a problem. They are an absolute pain to resolve to get the recycling right from the flats. It takes a lot of hard work, takes a lot of engagement from residents. Uh, Vicky's team are working hard on it and we are having some joy, so we are improving the recycling rates from the flats. And in fairness, most of the multi-stories are in, are in Tamworth. Uh, the round review we did speak about earlier, so we did look at the rounds to try and find efficiencies within them, and efficiencies were found. We will find again that with all the amount, with the amount of growth that's going on across the two boroughs, 
there will be a round review again in another three months, six months. It's ongoing. It, it's, it, it's business as normal. If you're not reviewing your rounds on a regular basis, you're going to become efficient, inefficient. Um, so that is occurring. Um, it does mention weekly food collections here and an option to appraisal on that. Uh, for some of you will be aware of the government way strategy and changes that are afoot. So the Environmental Act in 2021 became statute. It's not been enforced yet. But one of the large changes that all the authorities are, have on their agenda is the potential and the strong potential of a weekly food um, waste collection service. Um, before we all get scared away, there are about 145 councils in the country that do a food collection service. I've come from a council that has delivered a food collection service for about the last 10 years. Um, it is a big project, it is a big change. It does have what I always refer to as the yuck factor, um, but it does work and it is something that we will be coming back with further ideas on, costs on, and, and the reality of when it becomes uh, a necessity. Uh, fleet review. You may or may not be aware that the fleet at Lichfield uh, got renewed and is now um, more mature, shall we say. Um, we are looking to start planning now for where we go with fleet. My background, I'll be honest, is very, very strong on fleet. I'm, yeah, I, I understand it, I get it, I know where we're heading. But we have got a change that we're going to have to have a new fleet in by uh, April 25. That sounds quite a long way off until we start talking about lead times on vehicles. You'll hear all sorts of figures thrown around. The reality is it will vary between with the main manufacturers at the moment, somewhere between six months and 15 months, depending on the models that you take. So the work is being done. However, I will stress to all members, and I've said the same to Lichfield, that until we actually know what our strategy is going forward along the lines of food waste or any changes that we may make to our, our collection regimes, we can't make the decisions on fleet. So we have a period of time over the next number of months where we start to agree across the Joint Waste Board what the, what the future strategy looks like, then we can buy our fleet. Um, that will certainly tie in with all the environmental aspects of fleet and to give you a rough ballpark figure, uh, most local authorities, 25% of their emissions are down to the vehicles that they run. Um, there are ideas out there, again we, we, we had a chat earlier, from different uh, forms of fuel through to electric vehicles, through to hydrogen vehicles, but can we forget about that one because I think a hydrogen bin truck's about £800,000 which is ridiculous. Um, but what we can promise is that we are starting to look, and one of the reasons I got bought in was to start putting a fleet plan together, not for 18 months down the line, uh, but for the next 10 years. So we start to have some kind of a logical plan about where we're moving uh, and how many million pounds that is likely to cost the council over the next 10, 15 years. Uh, workforce plan, I think the work in, in reality is, is, is resolved. We are currently recruiting. Um, our operation was using too much agency. We should want people that are going to be employed by Litchfield to work for Litchfield and Tamworth that want to work there, that we're an employee of choice and that people are proud to work there. We are getting a degree of success on there. Um, also been looking at the diversity aspects. Uh, unfortunately, waste by its very nature historically has always been white working class in male individuals. <coughs> um, we are slowly seeing some changes, so it, it, it's great we've got a, a few females that now work for, for the, uh, the Joint Waste Board. And it's good that the last batch of applicants, again, does reflect a wider across society. Um, are we an employer choice? Well, the last batch of applicants, I think there was 43 applicants for free driving vacancies. That's unheard of, to be honest, in, the, in my time in local authority. So that's a really good positive news. Review of the commercial waste service. Um, 
work is ongoing, but we're not in a position to actually say where we where we are going with that one. I do believe, and I think it's the same as your priorities when you come into a new role, you pick off the big areas that need addressing first. And when we're looking at multi-million pound on fleet replacement, multi-million pound on our standard operations collections, that's where the priority is. However, I know that from a perspective from my um, my, my director um, and executive and from portfolio holders, we will be asked to look at that and we will look to make ways and we can actually you know, bring in money from a successful um, trade recycling service. Uh, final thing to bring to the table, um, and it was uh, it was Nigel actually, who many of you will know from the Tamworth days, who bought an idea along for a citizens app, uh, which is basically an app that, uh, and it was initially thought of as being on a from a waste perspective, but down the, download this app onto your mobile phone to be able to start getting information about your waste service from, guess what, we're running behind, therefore leave your bins out. We've had a breakdown, we're not going to be able to collect today, it's going to be tomorrow, please leave out day change. Can you start recycling this product, please, or whatever messages that we had out there. Uh, it, took the, it took the app to Litchfield, and in fairness time, I've actually I've come along to see it from, uh, from officers, and it's something that we, we are seriously looking at. It's something, again, that I've ran past Councillor Jay which is worth looking at from a perspective of both councils. Uh, the bit that impressed me, and I'm not easily impressed when I see apps from companies coming out there, it's not just about waste. You can use it for uh, elections, you can use it for your any leisure services, whatever service you've got out there that you want to promote, it, it can be used on that way. So again, interesting developments and something that we'll be asking Tamworth to come along, get, along with Litchfield to have a look about whether it actually as benefits to all. Um, I genuinely won't go through the graphs, as interesting as they are, uh, but if anybody has got any individual questions, uh, more than welcome to ask, ask personally, drop me an email, and I'll, I'll, I'll try and explain. But the general trends are all pretty positive in terms of customer service, all positive in terms of um, the quality of the material, not in a bad place at all financially with that little niggle that our recycling rate has, has fallen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Steve. Can I just ask you a couple of questions before we go round the, the group? Um, could the, the drop in the recycling rates be anything to do with the changing people's buying habits? Have we done any? Um, yes. Yeah, I, I was uh, thinking over since the pandemic, people have changed. I mean, I know that the stuff I bring in the house now is very different, and maybe people are buying a lot more fresh stuff and there's less packaging. So I wondered if that was um, an issue. The missed bins, do you put them into different sections? Is there a section of this of them just not being in the right place? And is that a reason that they're missed? or? Are they just missed for whatever reason? Um, the blue bags, how sustainable are they? How many of them have we had to reissue? I just wondered how, how good they were and how long we expected them to last. And really interested in the campaign, I'm presuming it's around comms and getting the message out there because I regularly try and look for the leaflet that tells me what I'm supposed to do. So any time that we can keep that onto people's um, agenda, I think would be good. And the app sounds fabulous. Thank you. Councillor Jeff. <coughs> Thank you. Kind of touched on two things I was going to mention. I just want to uh, uh, raise that. The few things I ever mentioned that were raised to me, but that was only 45 minutes ago, right? So uh, campaign, Litchfield may have decided it. Doesn't mean we have. There's a cost to it, an app. Litchfield may have decided it, doesn't mean we have. We will discuss it internally. We'll then discuss it as a group and we'll decide what is right for Tamworth. So that's not an announcement of something we're doing. We're going to decide what's right for Tamworth. So I just want to get that out there first. Um, but the service itself, as we can see, the teething issues have been solved. Uh, it's running on budget. There's a slight overspend in year one, but 
really in the grand scheme of things for a new service is a negligible overspend uh, and the data shows that the residents are well engaged and although the recycling rate has dropped our dry recycling rate is still actually very good so uh, to be commended as a service which ones to get they're not policy announcements we will decide what's right for Tamworth thank you uh, just to agree there with um, Councillor Jay uh, the app and the comms and the recycling campaign isn't agreed at Litchfield either they are discussion points but they are good ideas that are certainly worth looking at for both parties questions that you, you raised habits definitely have changed uh, we've all sort of seen the effects of the cost of living crisis uh, buying habits have changed I think an, a, another factor which is quite key in this is that the, the suppliers are changing so the packaging that you're seeing on your products will you know there's a lot of criticism of companies that were using far far too much packaging and there has been a reduction in that that's um, excuse me uh, that is double-edged. Uh, one, the suppliers will do it because they should have their own environmental credentials that they're trying to meet. Secondly, uh, extended producer responsibility, EPR, uh, is on the agenda. And at that stage, producers are going to be asked to pay for the packaging that they produce. So they're going to have to contribute towards the collection costs of, of, of how we recycle it. So a number of factors that are changing... Um, I haven't seen any analysis yet that's putting it down to X percent of this, X percent of that, but it is fair to say that you've also seen the drop in residual value, um, tonnage as well, so total tonnage has dropped. Uh, missed collections, is there a reason? Um, it's a good question. Uh, I often believe it actually comes down to, a, a large extent, comes down to human error. Um, and I think, again, what I would like to say, that while we talk about human collection, and 54 missed collections last week. That means that the service level for the number of uh, collections that we did make on time is 99.99. It's ridiculously high. Now, there's no other industry where you have a service level that is that high, and we criticise ourselves for the number of missed collections. However, one's too many, and we do look to try to address them. And you get a, you, you get a play for you get a, you get a whole range of why people miss them. I didn't know where it was kept. Oh, they've always put it there. They've moved it. I genuinely missed it. Um, different crew on the round. You know, somebody's called in sick. Different crew's gone out there. And it is an art. If you know your round, you know your round. Um, so nothing specific. But again, the figures are down. What is probably industry standard aren't bad at all. Blue bags. Um, I could get technical and tedious, but yes, they will last to a large, a, a better extent. They are of a tube design now. So that means they're almost a tube. It's one bit of material without... Whereas the old bags were stitched together. Now, if I've got a stitch, didn't rip right for the effect, but you get the idea. So that was the concept that they are genuinely should be more sustainable. I know that from other oil parties that bought the bags in, so if you look at the earlier over Telford, if we look at Newcastle, if we look at Staffsborough Council, the bags aren't wearing yet. Okay, okay. Um, comms, campaign, I, I think we covered on there. Okay, thank you, Chair. Clayton. Clay thank you, Chair, and thank you for the um, presentation. Um, I was, in some ways, really pleased to see that the assisted service had gone up, because when um, when this system was brought to committees or several times that, that I was on, that was one of the things I was really concerned about. About people not being able to physically manage the bags. So although it's costing us more, it's something that I think the residents really needed. And I think when you do your comms, again, that should be part of the comms, that people are aware that that service is available. Can I? I've got some other points. Can I? <laughs> Um, the blue bags, you mentioned new bags, are they being rolled out to everybody or just as the lifespan of the old bag dies off? 
Um, they are there and they are available for people that require them. But we're not doing a rollout to take out to residents, so we're not going to drop off a new bag at every household in the, you know, the 90,000 households that we've got. Um, but they are available. And what you'll find is naturally over time as the, the old bags start to tear, they will start to um, get replaced. And gradually over time, I think you will see an increase in the number of bags that are out there. I think we did ask, um, is there 7,000 in the depot? I think. Yes. I haven't counted them, I'll be honest. But I think it's around about 7,000 that we've got. So that should be okay for normal work and that should be a fair a fair amount. And if any resident does need an additional bag, they are available. It's up on the website and we'll, we'll, we'll deliver shortly after. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Just going back on that, the replacement of the bags, is that proactive by the crews or do people have to ask? What I'm thinking is, do they carry a quantity and if they see something that's in a poor state, they would just replace it or it's got to be requested? Um, it would be requested. The crews can't carry bags around with them just in terms of where you have to keep them on the vehicle. So we would ask the resident to pick them up. Just bear with me while I... Dickie, if we do lose a bag, chuck one into the back, we will, they will flag it up. They can flag up on bars, they can't they? Yeah, the crews can report if something... Same with the bin. If it's gone in the back of the wagon, they have a report that can do it and that automatically orders them one. Hiya, thank you Stephen for your report. Um, you mentioned about the work that you're doing with flats and trying to get their recycling rates up. Every single one of us have got communal areas um, within our wards and there seems to be um, one of the biggest issues is the bins don't get emptied. Now that might be because the wrong rubbish has been put in the wrong bin, but what work are we doing with those communal areas where there's more than one bin, say, a, a block of flats in a in a in a road, um, because it's other than potholes, which is a swear word. Other than that, that's my second biggest issue into my post bag every week. As we're changing the recycling over to the dual stream, every single resident's getting a personally addressed letter, giving them information on how to use them in the same way that the, the households got them when they changed from the bag. So everyone is having that information to start off with and we are trying to engage where there are issues with the landlords and the residents. We are more than happy to do resident meetings. We, as well as being the council um, landlord, we also engage with the private landlords as well and the housing associations. And we've always got um, a recycling officer who's more than willing to come out and do talks. So we, we're trying to improve the information that goes to all the communities. I would prefer a visit. I know it's t officer time, if you're sending out a letter, it's just one more piece that's got to be recycled, potentially into the wrong bin. When we do have two recycling officers that cover the whole of the two districts, um, they do try to engage... Well, I've, I'm actually recruiting for one because we would have one down. They do visit... The, the letters are hand-delivered, so there is someone there at the time to have the conversations, and where we can, we do try and do door-knocking as well. Thank you. Do we have any more? Councillor Maycock. Cheers. Thank you, Chair. Thanks for the uh, talk. Um, just a little bit further on that. If, if they are contaminated, wh whereas if it was a single household, th that resident of that household would have to change, change the bins round, sort, sort them out before it's collected again. How does that work with a multi occupancer? If I had the answer to that, I'd, I could solve the problem for a lot, a lot of councils out there. To try and give you a, a, a perspective about what's of a, of a, of a different or policy so we don't get specific about anyone within Tamworth, when you go to the multi-occupancy places, you don't produce the same quality of recycler that you do from the, the main streets, the, you know, the, the, the normal, the, 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 the estates. Um, now, what you almost end up with there, and it just tend to be block by block or block of flats by block of flats. At previous places, what we ended up doing was we ended up collecting what we would deem to be the green flats and those that produce good quality material. 
and we went in there, picked it up, sent it to the Murth, um, no problems at all. We then had the middle butch where it was, you know, it was a little bit touch and go. And what we'd do is we'd take it back, we'd tip it on us, we'd tip it somewhere and we'd try and sort through it. We don't have the facility to do that. But you almost would honest and you go to the Murph and say, this is what we've picked up. Um, is it acceptable? You then get to the difficult ones where unfortunately people aren't um, participating or it, it, it is getting abused. And to be honest with you, that load that you're picking up, all you're doing with is burning it because you can't send it into a, a recycling level. So yeah, it's extremely difficult to get the flats, but to solve the flats, and that's the work that Vicky and her team certainly keep working on, keep going on, keep banging on about. But if you can get the residents to buy in, you've got a fighting chance. Problem that, as you point out, is that unfortunately one one resident can ruin it for all. It, I like the sound of that. <coughs> the, the the sort of system that you had there, the green, not so good, not good. Because um, I think the risk is if we try and we had one one load that was rejected this year. Now the risk is if you're doing all them flats, that three thousand pounds going to go up and up and up and up. So looking at as you say, who's doing it right? Everybody should do it right, but if it's going to cost a lot of money by just saying everybody's going to do it right, that, then I think that sort of scheme, need, tiered scheme needs to be in. Where we do get reports of contamination, we report that to the landlord and we will, it is the landlord's responsibility to arrange for that to be cleared. We will work with them and that's where we are keen to do engagement. That's where we've done joint visits with the housing officers, whether it be for the local authority of our housing associations and landlords. So we do try and engage. All the landlords were written to before the start of the new service, advising them of their responsibilities and asking them to help us and we'll help them. So that's how we work it as a team. Thank you, Chair, for letting me have um, a second bite. Um, operational performance um, managed to reduce the, the crews down from 8.8 .8 to 8.5, um, which prevented an additional 1,100 per week. Um, but there is going to be a review regarding the amount of housing developments in Tamworth and Litchfield, but I'm more concerned about Tamworth at the minute. Um, is there any sort of prediction of how much that might affect, affect like the, the collection times and the crews and the amount of costing involved? Because there's an awful lot of housing developments springing up around time Road. Um, right, it's, it's <laughs> this is quite an interesting one. Uh, what we do have, we do have money in the reserves from the Joint Waste Board, which will come in that is planned to be able to fund the additional collections from the growth. Uh, the difficulty is it tends to be steps because on one hand, you build a new house, people pay their bills, that should fund, that's the theory, that should fund the step that you've got. But if we work on the idea that we've got uh, you know, 1,200 properties on a, on a round, hypothetically, it's about right. As soon as you go up to 1,250, because new little estate's made, you can't buy one point one's worth of truck and you do trigger into additional costs that comes in which is disproportional. So you do get this sort of stepped approach that comes on there. Um, but the reality is operational wise, if we bring another five thousand properties in, we need to to adjust and be able to uh, to look at the rounds. Um, and at some point you do need additional capacity. I think it would be very useful, Chair, if when this next review is done, that we have it factored into one of our meetings so that we can look at that, because uh, the amount of households that are going up, I think it'd be quite considerable. Thank you. I'm well aware from what you were saying about keeping it under review. 
obviously with the amount of house building that's going on it's going to need to be reviewed quite regularly isn't it so if we can have something back on that Thank you very much for your report. Um, the recommendation is that we note the update on the performance of the dual stream recycling service. Do I have a mover for that? Thank you, Councillor Bryce, and a seconder. Councillor Wood. Um, all those in favour? Thank you. Thank you very much for your time, and I'm asking if you want to leave or if you want to stay here, but you're quite happy to do whatever. All right, <laughs> especially on this hot night. <laughs> Thank you. We go on to item nine then, future high street funds quarterly update. So the quarterly update has been circulated to provide an update on the future high street funds programme of work. And we have Councillor Turner and Anna Miller and Alice Poulton here to introduce the report for us. Are you starting, Councillor Turner? Thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, it, is, it is our pleasure to uh, update the committee with the, uh, the latest report, which I'm assuming you've all read. Uh, and comprehended um, and it is I suppose f fitting and proper that I pass it over to my esteemed colleagues <laughs> who will now update you all in detail. Thank you. Um, as Paul said I'm sure you've all read it so I'll just blitz through some of the highlights if that's okay. Um, in terms of general sort of summary and progress um, I'm really pleased to say since the last time this committee met we have made significant progress and we are well into our delivery stage um, and we've appointed a main contractor um, that would be Spell and Metcalf to undertake the works across the Future High Street Fund programme and it's also worth noting that the college have appointed their main contractor uh, and that's Kia. Um, going on to more project specific updates starting with middle entry um, we're really pleased to say that the planning application for the new build flex and the middle entry bridge link and glazed canopy demolition has been consented. Um, again, spellers are kind of undertaking that work and we'll be doing a lot of prep to do so. Um, up until the last few days, we've not been able to enter into our pre-construction services agreement with them um, because we'd noted uh, from our cost consultants that there were significant budget pressures um, that had been flagged to us on that particular project um, and as such we had some discussions with the programme board over the potential to reduce scope and therefore uh, cost as detailed in this report. Um, at the time of writing we didn't have a decision, please say now we do and it's very much full steam ahead, full scope of works to go ahead. Um, and as a consequence, we can now sign that uh, PCSA that I just mentioned. So, yeah, we're happy to, to report that there's some progression on that. Um, just going into a bit more detail around the highways agreement, we are in dialogue with them over the stopping up application, as currently um, there is part of the new flex build that would actually be on what is currently uh, staff's county highway land. Um, happy to say that seems to be progressing well, but highways have flagged to us in the past um, certain issues their side in terms of time scale and resource so it's just something for us as a project team to be tracking which we are um, again utilities diversions and agreements around those middle entry units um, are being identified we've had surveys undertaken already and again that's kind of in the scope of uh, spell and metcalf's works and they're continuing with that currently um, the TBC project team have liaised with the economic development lead um, just to talk through what the operational sort of model for the flex building will look like once that is ready uh, to come into use. Um, so again, just full steam ahead with preparations on that. 
Uh, moving on to the Castle Gateway, again, really pleased to say that the nationwide legal agreement is in its final stages. Um, the agent for MBS is basically just checking over last documents before we execute that. Um, Spell and Metcalf are due to start on site at the Peel Cafe in the next couple of weeks, as I'm sure you've seen from the press release that went out recently. Um, it's just worth noting that obviously because of the works to the Peel Cafe, the front and rear of the building will not be in use and there may be some impact on Market Street, as that's obviously sort of the main thoroughfare in and out of that building. Um, and again, the area in front of this building now with the benches and the planter, um, there's some preparation works going on there in the next couple of weeks to remove that street furniture so that we don't have any issues with access in and out of that for our site workers. Um, and again, it's just a safety concern in terms of pedestrians, etc. So I just want to make sure that's all covered. Um, initial design and opening up works for the Market Street properties um, has been prepared and the conservation officer, or the previous now conservation officer, has uh, provided input on that. Um, this will now go to Spell and Metcalf to price. Once it is priced, we will look to enter our pre-construction services agreement with them for that package of work. Um, moving on to the Castle Gateway section, um, the designs have now been commit uh, sorry, submitted for planning consent. Um, again, TBC project team are in dialogue with Staffs County Highways uh, with regards to the public realm in that area. Um, and again, it's also worth noting that we've, as a team, applied for UK SPF funding to help fund that portion of the public round works to that area because it is outside of the original scope of the Future High Street Fund scheme, but obviously complements elements of the scheme, such as the nationwide demo and the area left behind thereafter. So just something for you all to be aware of. Um, once Bell and Metcalf have completed their pricing exercise, they'll draft the PCSA for the Castle Gateway too, and similarly to the Market Street properties, we'll hopefully get into an agreement with them on that, but that will have to go to Programme Board for sign-off. It's not something that we'd agree until it's been put past them. Um, it's anticipated that we'll be on site later in the year with those two projects once agreed. Moving on to College Quarter, um, again, Spell and Metcalf are underway with their enabling works and preparations for the refurbishment of the old co-op building, which will be the second uh, Tamworth Enterprise Centre. Um, it's also worth noting that South Staffordshire College are now on site uh, with their contractor Kia. As I'm sure you've all seen, we've completed the demolition of the old 1960s department store. So really great to see those guys on site and making progress. Um, application for the St Edith's Square landscaping works, which is within the Future High Street Fund scheme, has been submitted to the LPA for determination, and we're just waiting on uh, some communication on that. And it's anticipated that the refurbishment of the tech will actually start in August. At the time of writing, we've written autumn, but we've had an updated programme from Spell and Metcalf since that point, and they've indicated that they will be on site in August, and enabling works are underway currently. So you might see some activity around there in the near future. Moving on to general programme, as we've got so many sites to complete on, uh, we've got quite a lot happening all at once. It's quite a lot logistically in the town centre and we've got one contractor working across the full piece. Um, so they're trying to you know, schedule that as best as they can. It's worth thinking about that the anticipated um, delivery date will extend beyond the original uh, Department of Leveling Up's uh, spend deadline, which is March 24. This is something that isn't unusual from speaking to the department across other authorities, and they've said that actual delivery can continue past the spend deadline as long as the funds are committed. So again, just something to be aware of. Budget, I won't go into too much. I've already talked around the middle entry issue that has been recently resolved. Um, the budget has been challenged. Um, we've seen a lot of increases in the draft costs from our cost consultant as a result of the inflationary pressures, which I'm sure won't be a surprise for you to hear. Um, and again, as mentioned earlier, we don't yet have the full finalised price on Market Street or Castle Gateway. And again, as we've spoken about at previous meetings of this committee, surveys have revealed that the condition of the Market Street properties is perhaps a little bit worse than we thought at bid stage. 
so the repairs will be significant and we need to brace ourselves for the costs that might come with that um, again just another thing to be aware of in terms of communications we're still advertising our monthly drop-in sessions we've not had much take up on that at this stage however we endeavour to keep businesses um, and locals updated as much as possible and we're liaising with our comms team to do so um, again worth talking about what's happening with the market obviously with us starting on site with the Peel Cafe uh, we're aware that one of the traders would be affected so um, the regen team myself and Spella Metcalf have all agreed to meet them on site next week to discuss their relocation and also the relocation of any other uh, storeholders that will be impacted when we start our flex and mid entry works um, Again, as I've said, we will just endeavour to keep businesses updated as and when we need to, and Spell and Metcalf are committed to also helping us with that process. And I think that's it for now. Thank you for that. Um, if I can just start with a couple of questions. <laughs> um, the item that you said about the Peel Cafe, the work starts in a couple of weeks, and you move in street furniture. Do, do you mean by that the benches? Yes. Right. Yeah, it's the, I think there's four or five benches out the front and right. a large street kind of planter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I'm, I'm just worried those. about how long the benches in the middle of summer are going to be removed for. It, if it was in the winter, there wouldn't be an issue. But this is the time when people are sitting around in the market square and, you know, do yeah, we have a time understood. frame? We're trying to move them as close to the start on site date as possible because, as you've said, you know, it is nice weather. We don't want people to be negatively impacted. But unfortunately, for us to be able to get site traffic on and off site safely with pedestrians as well as the site team in mind, it's just one of those unfortunate things that we're going to have to do. Not so much a question, but with my other head on, I'm chairman of the Royal British Legion. We have a massive parade through the town centre, Market Street, George Street and the St Editha Square. Um, I've not been given any information other than what I've just heard and some of the comms that have come out that that parade may not be able to go ahead come November um, because obviously you've just said you're going to have people working across many different parts of the town centre so we need to probably look at where else we can do our parade Tru tr truly selfishly here because it's a massive event for Royal British Legion and veterans in our town if we can't parade it's how we how we do it differently um, so I would like to be kept up to dated with that with that but also um, get the the times and dates of these monthly drop-in sessions so if I'm not available then somebody else can go and get that info that's noted thank you um, just to say that we have been liaising with our arts and events team on the calendar of events I don't know if it's because it's later in the year that it's not come up yet I know certainly we've had conversations about fireworks for example um, and any sort of more imminent events but we've not we've not spoken about that particular one mentioned but you know again note the importance and we'll keep you updated Anna sorry yeah if I could just add to that um, I'm not sure if it's going to cause you a problem so significant that you wouldn't be able to march so in terms of market street where we're going to have to stop pedestrians is basically here by the town hall in front of the peel cafe you will still be able to use market street on the other side of the town hall um, george street shouldn't be too affected there will be hoarding around what will be the demolition site um, and you should then be able to loop round and go through St Edith's Square and I think the square is probably something that's going to sort of come towards towards the end of our programme when other things have been completed so I, I think you might be okay but um, yeah we probably do need to uh, liaise on that um, are you liaising with the arts and events team normally Tom Bennett um, but it's an annual event it's in the calendar every year um, obviously I'm aware of what's going on but I'm not always available to take that information um, so we just need to know if it's going to have a, a massive impact on whether we can look at because <laughs> army for example march in rows of six so there's six, six apart if we can't march in rows of six we can march in rows of four for example 
they're, they're very durable, they'll move how we ask them to move. Um, and we've done it before, we did the parade through um, two years ago, so. Um, so we have a monthly delivery team meeting where it's sort of a, an internal meeting where other service areas where it may have an impact on or may be affected by the Future High Streets Fund programme, we can talk it through. And arts and events are represented on that meeting by A.D. Ramsell. So we do have direct conversations with him. So we'll raise this at the next delivery team meeting, which is probably coming up next week. Next week, I think it is. So we'll raise it with him and make sure it's on his radar as well as our own. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's good to see that work's progressing well. A um, couple of things that I just wanted to ask questions around. Um, there's been a couple of things that have been posted on social media recently that the college don't have funding in place for their building. Um, can you dispel that myth? Um, and that we're not going to be left with a hole in the ground and we are going to be left with a nice, shiny new college. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, second thing um, I, I just wanted to just talk about was the, um, so the middle entry part of the project has come in um, a bit higher in cost and you're looking to reduce the cost by one and a half million to bring the project within budget. And I think you just said that, that it's been agreed that we're going to go ahead with a full scope. So we're not losing anything from that. Is, have I understood that right? Or? Yes, uh, to answer your first question, yes, the college do have full funding in place. They received notification quite some time ago. I think it was January, December, something like that. Excellent. Yeah, they got it from the Department for Education. So that project is absolutely going ahead. Excellent. Um, and they hope to open by the end of next year. That's the current programme. Um, your second question around the scope of works, um, we're, we are sticking with the original scope of works, mm -hmm. despite the increase in costs. So, so then my, my, my question actually is, so the, the increase in cost, the extra uh, one and a half million, whatever that was, um, and I think I noted some, some other additional costs um, which are potentially going to put the project over budget. Where is the funding for that coming from? Um, and just one final one, because you might be able to answer both at the same time. Um, I think in, the, um, in, in your report, you, you'd said that um, the project's going to take slightly longer than the deadlines that had been set by government. Um, does that affect anything with regards to, to when and how we can spend the money? What's, what's the, the, the basis around that? Because I know there was originally there was some pretty strict deadlines that we had to have the money spent by certain times. So, so with the project going over, what, what's the case with that now? So your, your first question around where's the extra money going to come from? So a report will be going to full council in July asking for additional capital monies to essentially attach to the project to allow that additional cost to be accommodated within the project. Um, so I, I can't give detail now, but that is a forthcoming report, which will be on, on full council. Um, in terms of the timescales of programme, um, you're right, the, the, um, the requirement by government is to spend the money by the end of March 24, um, and our, our hope is to be able to commit the money by the end of March 24, but they're quite clear that they're quite comfortable with delivery going beyond that date. It should also be noted that some of the money that we've got in the programme isn't government money, it's TBC money. And so that's not actually bound by that, that same strict programme. So we can spend that money at any, at any point um, uh, within the programme and it, it, it doesn't matter quite so much. Um, we're just waiting for tranche three to come through from government. Um, we're expecting it in June. We were expecting it in April. You know, we're nearly at quarter one for the third year. Um, so we're, you know, we're still expecting it. No one's had it. We're not unusual in that respect. Um, we have a quite a bit of dialogue with DLOC, which is the, well, the levelling up department, um, over all of these issues with programme costs, etc., etc. And what I would say is that uh, we're in exactly the same situation as every authority in the programme. It's been challenging to mobilise a project to deliver it within budget and on time uh, over three years. So we're, not, we're not unusual in that respect. Um, we have asked the question directly of government, do they have any concerns with us? And they, they do not have any red flags with Tamworth. So we feel, it, we feel confident um, that we will receive the money and that we can, can, can complete. 
Um, so whilst we are running a bit behind on delivery, actually, we're actually doing okay compared to some authorities who have really struggled, really, really struggled. Um, I would say that um, you know, we received a full ask of 21.65 million. Our programme is incredibly ambitious. Um, and on that basis, I think we're doing a good job of it. Thank you. Can I just come back, Chair, quick, quickly? Can I just, um, yeah, thanks for that. And I, um, and I have to agree, I think, I think we are doing a great job. And I honestly can't wait to see the, the results at the end of it. Um, I think it's really good news. Um, really good for Sam. So well done to all of you for staying on that. Thank you, Chair. Um, you mentioned about the monthly drop-in sessions, how you had no one turn up to them or hardly anyone. Has anyone actually gone and spoke to the businesses directly? Because I have recently, after our meeting, um, just to see what they say in response. And from what they've told me, the people who work there, they've had no one come around and talk to them about what the plans are. And quite a few of the businesses are against the removal of the roof for one. Uh, one of the businesses has been there for 39 years and they've admitted that they may have to close after all this time because obviously it would, it would affect their business badly. Um, could you clarify if that's all right? I was just going to say about how they've been advertised. They've been advertised via the Tamworth, uh, Transforming Tamworth, sorry, website. Um, we do recognise, though, based on some sort of feedback like what you've mentioned, that that's maybe not reaching all audiences. So it's something that we've spoken to the wider Ecom Dev and Regen team about. They obviously liaise with the businesses on various different matters. They might know how better to target them. We did do leaflet drops, for example, when we were doing works to the back of Midlentry, enabling works, things like that, and we noticed a bit more kind of success with that it might be that we have to revert back to that or we re-advertise we have spoken to comms team about it as well because we again i don't know if it's getting to them through press releases paul yeah thanks for that uh, i can bring you a bit more up to date we've uh, mentioned that at uh, exec level uh, and as the program becomes more spades in the ground and building up there will be officers tasked with personally visiting the shops and personally taking the leaflets and the documentation and the calendar, etc. So, although you know you could argue that the drop-in time four till seven, most people are working. There's always a reason why not to go rather to go, but now we're taking it from that to them. So there will will be improved communications going forward, and it will be monitored. And if necessary, the councillors as, as well will be, you know, communicating with with, with the uh, the shop owners. Thank you. I think that was the main concern of quite a few of the businesses that they've had no direct contact with anyone, and it was just a, it was a lot of concerns from them. And obviously, when I mentioned to you at the last council meeting, perhaps use one of the empty properties that we seem to have, like on the way you have the work around going on around there, have the displays of what the final what it would look like in the end, same for middle entry and perhaps the same for over there, just in you know, the, the, the designs, the plans themselves, just a thought. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And um, we have talked about putting more information on the hoarding when the hoarding goes up so that people have an idea as to what's going on behind it, essentially. Um, and the reason we've sort of held back a bit is we wanted planning consents in place so that we're not raising expectations as, oh, it could be this, and then something completely different comes along. So we've sort of held back a bit. But when the hoarding goes up, and the Pill Cafe one should be in the next sort of two, three weeks, we're going to start to um, populate it with more information. Or, uh, you know, like, a, like, like, say, a QR code where you can scan and be taken to a website that gives you more information, that sort of thing. Um, I think on the engagement side, where we've really struggled with comms, being completely honest, is that the timetable keeps moving. And so what we don't want to do is to go to anyone and say, right, you know, the first of the month this is happening, and then it doesn't. So we, we are having a few struggles because the timetable keeps moving quite considerably, depending on lots of different things. Um, so that's been one of the reasons why comms perhaps hasn't been as visible as it could have been. Um, I think, though, in terms of some of the businesses, um, obviously we've had quite a few planning applications come through. The planning committee 
um, for the Future High Street Fund projects. So that they have been very visible, and we've made sure they've gone out on social media, people can comment, and a lot of businesses would have been directly uh, sent letters and, if you like, notified of those applications, uh, you know, identifying that here's an opportunity to have your say. Um, we were aware that the canopy wasn't, wasn't very well loved as a project. We were expecting a petition to come in as part of planning, and it, it actually never did in the end, but we were expecting it. Um, but that's now being consented anyway, for good planning reasons more than anything else. So, yeah, I hope that, I hope that assists. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Anna, for the uh, talk. Uh, I just want to dig a little bit deeper um, about the construction going on over that side, uh, the Pearl Calf. Um, obviously, we're still waiting on the quotes or, or the pricing for the properties on the other side. With the, will they both be happening together then, if, if we get them in? I think there'll be a little, a little bit of overlap. Um, so they'll be on site with Peel very soon. Um, I think the completion date is something like, May. yeah, April, May of next year. Whereas on, on this side of the street, if you like, on the Market Street properties, yeah. um, because of the condition of the properties, we've kind of got a bit of a three-stage process going on. We've got to make it safe and watertight. Um, that's something we can do without planning consent. That's going to be stage one. And then we're going to start looking at sort of a second stage where we sort of dry out the building. There might be things that we need to do in there that need planning consent. And then sort of stage three is the actual fit out and what, what that end product's going to look like. So you might see sort of weatherproofing, scaffolding going up so that we can replace gutters and, and make sure that, that we haven't got water egress into the building, which is what we have at the moment. But actually, the first project is the, the demolition of Nationwide, and that will start after the peel, because the peel gets refurbished, Nationwide go into it after they've fitted it out, and we are then able to demolish the building that they leave behind. So there will be, there will be a, a bit in terms of, I think that phase one on Market Street will probably be implemented whilst peel is, is going ahead. Um. Well, we're on June now, so that might well be happening before November then. Which bit the, um, I think probably, I think potentially, potentially, yes, potentially. But w they won't be doing construction works. But the scaffolding like. will be up, won't it? I mean, there's already scaffold on it. There'd be a lot more, particularly around Outs the back. Outside. Inside. It's inside. Yeah, from yeah. Basement. We've already get propped the outside because of safety concerns. Um, we, we can't see it because the safety concerns are at the back of the building. Okay. Um, just when when do you think the 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 prices are going to be coming in for that that so, so that bit of the project? Yeah. So um, so we've got one contractor on board, Spella Metcalf, mm. and we're basically, if you like, letting the contracts one by one. So we've done Peel, Tech, hopefully middle entry with the signed PCSA very soon. And then they're going to look at Castle, Bridge and Market Street. Now, that we've just kind of got into those conversations. So maybe early draft estimates could be around August, September of this year, something like that. So more than likely before the next update, hopefully before the next update. Uh, next update is October, I think. Yeah. Possibly, Quarter, yeah. possibly, yes. Yep. Cheers. Thank you, Chair. Um, going back to what Councillor Wood was talking about, I was just wondering how many sessions, the engagement sessions that we've had um, since this is what, when they started? Before even my time, they were advertised, so since the early... A couple of years. Yeah, a couple of years. And have they been empty sort of throughout the time? Yeah. Yeah, so we've had some sort of ad hoc queries come through to us and then Anna's, as Anna's mentioned, you know, there's there's things that might come through sort of planning, but otherwise, no, there's not really been a take up. Was there a business engagement session pretty early on as well? October 21, there was um, 
Um, October 21, there was um, a business engagement session um, at the assembly rooms, actually. And the leader at the time, along with the head of regeneration, talked generally about regeneration projects rather than specifically Future High Streets Fund. But it was also talked about because it is one of our projects. Um, there, it was attended by about 40 people. Um, and a number of those participating, we did end up in quite a bit of a dialogue afterwards because they were raising specific concerns to themselves and their business. I think it was October 21, yeah. Um, and we let we let um, sorry, we gave to everybody um, as they left that engagement um, meeting. We gave them like a pack of information: how to engage with this, um, how to access the Tamworth um, website that we've got, Transforming Tamworth website. So we gave them a few bits and pieces to say this is how you can stay engaged. Just my last one. Um, I remember a few months back, it might be a few years ago now. There was the market stall um, with the plans for the college on there. Um, yes. Once they're like we've got the plans and the dates in place, will there be more events like that going on that sort of open, visible, um, clear communications? That particular market stall that you're talking about, that was actually um, Staffordshire College rather than Tamworth Borough Council. So, um, as part of um, the application that they submitted for the, the college bit, um, they did um, some consultation with um, residents. Um, I think they actually did consultation with the students at the college and recognised that that was probably just a single demographic and they should widen it. So they came into the town and did a day on a market stall trying to capture people who use the town centre instead, just to gauge views on the design of it principally and what they thought of it. And then that then was submitted with the planning application um, into, uh, into the Borough Council's planning team. We weren't planning on doing anything like that specifically, but what I would say is that um, the Speller Metcalf contractor has been quite clear with us that they would have quite a few site managers, one for each project, um, and it will be the site managers who on a daily basis will be available in their site hut, basically having those communications with the businesses on the ground, the businesses will go to them if they have issues, and they're also due to open in the old YMCA building, which is um, just down there, um, that's, that will be their site office. So they're going to be very visible on the high street and in front of businesses. So there will be a lot of communication um, on a daily basis with the contractor team once the project gets up and running. It's one of the reasons why we actually appointed them, because we liked, we liked that approach, because it felt really personable. And in a small space, a very small town centre, and dominated by construction, we felt that was a really important thing to do. Sorry, and just one last thing to come in there. Um, if we talk, for example, about the middle entry tenants, obviously they're technically under sort of peer groups, proviso, and obviously we keep them updated. But when it's something that directly impacts them, like I mentioned earlier, the works that were happening at the back in the rear courtyard, we went out ourselves to just leaflet drop them. So we, we can do that and continue to do that if it's effective. Thank you for that. I think that is something everyone would welcome, is that they get some one-to-one -one, um, communications. And the idea of the, um, the managers being on site, somebody needs to know that they're there. So that I'd like to think that there would be some communication, letting people know that they're there. You know, that They're not just going to magically work out where they need to go. Just on that, um, Spellers have actually got a site office in the town centre, I think it's in the old YMCA building, yeah. um, and they've been in touch with myself about advertising and comms to do with that once they move in. So there will be something advertised that kind of promotes their presence and hopefully the, the need to know names of people. Are there any other questions? No? Right, the um, recommendation is then that the committee endorse this report. Do I have a mover? Thank you, Councillor Clements. And a seconder, Councillor Claymore. All those in favour? Thank you. That's been passed then. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. So once again, I will say if you need to scoot off, you're quite welcome, <laughs> but you can stay and listen if you want to. <laughs> 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 you were waiting for the question. <laughs> right.
Right, so we're on to item 10, then the forward plan. Um, so are we asking the committee to review the forward plan? Yeah, it's just to review it really, if there's any, yeah. you know, if there's any items that you want to consider for your, for your work plan. It's, you know, is there anything anybody's device. got that they've already been thinking we should have on the forward plan? No, I, it is something I'd, I've looked at and I'd like to review. I'm sure there are some things that we should have on there. Um, and also, I'm not sure if I'm taking this out of order, but it says that next, the working groups, because they are the ones that we've got at the moment are totally out of date. So, can I just have a look at that again? So, I'm keen that these two things still go ahead. So, we're, I think I'd like to look for people to go on those groups today, please. Um, We'll start with the traveller, migrant traveller community. Is there anybody who would like to be on that? I would definitely like to be on that. Councillor Wood, is there anybody else? Councillor Claymore. Do we normally stick with about three? Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? No? Right. And then the other working group that is... Um, due to be meeting actually now is the facilities for HGV drivers in Tamworth and we've got Councillor Price so you're the working group chair yes um, yeah I, um, I would like with your permission chair um, the previous chair granted me permission to allow uh, Councillor Daniels to continue her work uh, on that subcommittee I'd like your permission to do that as well yeah. Um, but also, obviously, ask any other members that would like to be involved in that. Um, yeah, so right. Do we have anybody else who wants to be on that committee? I'm happy to do that, Chair, because as a litter picker, I'm sick of picking up all the rubbish that leave behind. Thank you. So we have Councillor Clements on that. And then um, I'm quite keen that if we decide when we're in these groups that we need to bring somebody else in, we do that. I've spoke to the officers and that's something we can, can put forward. So, Right, so we have those two groups. We'll start off with that and then we'll see where we go. But I'm keen for these to move forward quite quickly. So I'll put some dates out. Well, the officers will put some dates out. <laughs> and we'll... Um, did you have a date already, Councillor Price, for yours, seeing as it says June or July? What do you mean it says June or... Where does it say June or July? Yeah. On the work plan. Oh, it's just that that's just for... for yeah, we, we haven't got one set yet because right. um, I was waiting for the new, the new committee year okay. to start. Um, but I'll now set a date. Lovely. Thank you. So we have the plan. So what... So it's just now talking about the work plan, and like I said, you might just want to say, obviously, you're waiting on a meeting with the oh, right. to sort of discuss what's going to be coming. Yeah, so item 12 then, the ICNG Scrutiny yeah. Committee work plan. Um, I'm planning to have a meeting with ELT to go th with other scrutiny chairs to go through what's on the council plans. Yes, that's um, at the start of the meeting, Chair, you mentioned about the EV strategy coming, toward, coming to us before the end of the year, but I notice it's not on our agenda until November. I would like to propose that that is brought up the agenda because we can't wait till November because we won't get it finished. Yep. And for me, as a passionate EV driver, it's something that we need to be doing now, not yeah. in November yeah. another year later when it's already been on this scrutiny's agenda for five for years while, yeah. so we need to be pushing that up yes i have already asked the officers if we can do something about that because i am now a passionate ev driver as well from friday and i i did the research at the weekend and it was not good and my my comments to the officers was that's fine for me i can charge my car at home but if we're inviting people to come into town they won't come here if they can't charge of the car while they're here so we need to get that done sooner rather than later and it's all about the correct chargers it's not about just plonking no. a charger in the ground no. we don't want a load of rapid chargers that people are only here for 20 minutes we no. want some destination chargers that are future proof 22 kilowatts ideally yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if on the plan four is enough as well I would be happy to see that reviewed and them spread around yeah thank you
Yeah. So, yeah, so basically, on, if you look at our work plan, we've currently got probably only one item on each meeting. We can easily do two, sometimes three. We've done two this evening, and what time is it? Yeah. Half seven is probably a good time to finish, to be fair, but, you know, we've, we've, we have been talking the future history fund and the item four. I would like to see our meetings worth coming to rather than coming here for half an hour and then going home. Thank you. So just saying, I am expecting that obviously all of the, the, the dual stream cycling will come back at all the future yes. yes. again. Yeah. We've just got to confirm the dates with them as well. So we've got to get some yeah. dates. Obviously we need to get plastic pollution a date on as yes. well. So we've just got to, yeah. I think maybe if we get some dates in and then we can yeah. I, th I think the thing is we've got these these two things that are quarterly so they are going to keep repeating but we do need to bump those other things up the list a little bit and get some action on them but we'll, yeah, I'll look at that in my um, conversations with the officers thanks for that yeah so does anybody have anything else apart from the EV thing to add to the work plan Councillor Clark. Uh, thank you, Chair. Sorry, Liff, I just brought that. Thank you. Um, it's like I've not been a council very long, but the majority of things I've been getting calls about are council housing repairs, um, and that's something that we can look at sooner than rather than later because people are getting seen. In, in my in my experience, people are getting seen. They're having a box ticked, but the works are taking ages to be done. So, um, well, they're not being done at all, and they're having to do it again and reapply. So, if we can move that up the agenda, it's of, of great importance. Thank you. Be able to ask because that hasn't even got a date by it, has it? No, it hasn't. Do Again, and what I will sort of do, it might be worth just getting here because there is an item. It is coming up at the next corporate scrutiny meeting as well. So right. sort of maybe seeing what they're discussing and whether what you want is different. Maybe yeah. sort of meeting with the chairs to work out. Yeah. So we we, we need to be there, find out what's going on, and then see if we need to take something else up so from it. An answer, sorry. And also, like working group on that or something. Or it's, do you know what the date is for it going to corporate scrutiny? It's going to, there's, a, there's an item, yeah, next, so it's on the 20th. So oh, right. Next week going to corporate right. Scrutiny. I think if we look at what goes on there, then, and then we can make a decision. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. So, is that everything? Yeah. Well, thank you very much for bearing with me. I, w I will, you know, I will get names right next time, I promise, and put the thing on. Thank you very much, and I'll close the meeting now then. Thanks for your attendance. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. <coughs>